Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 24th, 2018. And uh, thank you, Tom H., for sending in one of the links to today's show. And credit and all the links to the articles I talk about will be down below. This first one's from uh, abc15.com. Self-driving Uber car hits and kills pedestrian in Arizona. You can uh, look up on just, uh, go to Google and just type in about the uh, Uber car hits and kills pedestrian. You'll see all kinds of different videos and uh, now they even got a video out of the reaction of the driver behind the wheel uh, when they hit the uh, person on the bicycle. Uh, the person on the bicycle, uh, by the way, ended up uh, passing away. Um, 49-year-old Elaine Herzberg was taken to the hospital where she died of her injuries. Now, the one question I have about this, too, is uh, Uber has decided, because of this happening, they've decided to cancel their program right now for the time being of uh, having the uh, self-driven cars. But I'm thinking about in the future the way... Our media tends to hype things, and I, I'm not putting down, you know, I'm not saying this is a, a minor thing at all when a pedestrian gets killed like this. It's something I even had talked about before when I talked about the uh, driverless cars that for some reason that seemed to be their real uh, sticking point with them becoming as good as we wanted them to, that they had a little bit of problem with identifying pedestrians in certain circumstances. And I think because this pedestrian was on a bicycle, maybe the shape or something like that or the way the computer saw the image they weren't aware of it enough obviously to stop from from hitting it so this can be an ongoing problem but like anything else it will be corrected and uh, when we do get to the point where the driverless vehicles are actually safer overall statistically than human drivers even during that period of time they're still going to injure or even kill a certain number of people if they're ten times safer and pedestrians and uh, driver cars in a year kill a thousand people and they're ten times safer they're still going to kill a hundred people in a year even if they are that much safer than human beings how are the news reporting how are the news reporters going to handle that are they going to over dramatize it and over hype it like they do with a lot of things and get people so upset over a robot car killing somebody i mean you obviously have reason to be upset but in the whole scheme of things if they're that much safer is it something that you really need to get upset about or are they just going to get on the bandwagon and ban uh, driverless cars because of that that's my real concern here is the way it's covered. I'm not really very trusting of the media. I mean, even I've found with some of the science uh, sites and stuff like that, too, they're more tending to go towards the drama. And I might get into that on another report about popular science and a, a writer reporting about IQ tests and basically dismissing them like they're ridiculous or silly and they have no real use. Uh, I might talk about that as a supplemental story or I might bring that up next week. But right now I'm thinking about that. But that's from popular science. As a matter of fact, my next story is from Popular Science. They still do have some pretty good stories, but that particular one by that writer kind of, I don't know, got me a little bit upset. And like I said, I'll, I'll deal with that later maybe. So anyway, in Popular Science, the last male northern white rhino just died, but science could still make him a daddy. Using some of the same techniques they use with uh, artificial insemination and uh, uh, other animals carrying for other animals, they may be able to do this. Uh, it says here, the death of a 45-year-old rhino is rarely... A tragedy, but they sold they seldom live much longer. Although Sudan's passing was long expected, it still struck a blow to conservationists all around the world. Sudan was the last male of his species, and he lives behind he leaves behind just two females in the entire northern white rhino population. So evidently, they have harvested eggs from the female rhinos and some others, and they've also harvested sperm from uh, male rhinos, even the ones besides uh, Sudan himself. So they have. Uh, the techniques and the wherewithal using it like they do with cattle to actually use uh, surrogates the uh, southern white rhino which is a subspecies uh, some people will actually claim that it's really not that much different some people say they've been separated long enough to really be considered a different species there's all kinds of arguments about that but evidently what they're going to do is they're going to try to keep the northern white rhino species pure by using the eggs and the sperm from um, the white the northern white rhinos that are left and then uh, creating a new population of northern white rhinos and letting the uh, southern white rhinos actually carry the babies. So uh, there is a chance they could come right back. I think right now they're at about uh, 20,000 for the southern white rhinos, so they're not um, endangered quite yet, but uh, they're classified, I guess, as vulnerable. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe a chance we can. And the reason why they're doing it, too, is not because people will say, well, it's normal for some species to go extinct. Yes, it is. But in this case of the northern white rhino, they say it is pretty much 100% um, human being, either um, using up uh, space that they had for habitat, so they had less habitat, or even just outright outright poaching. Um, 
in that case. Um, so it seems like it's pretty much entirely our fault about the northern white rhino. So I think it would be a fair thing to bring them back into existence. So uh, Next up from foxnews.com. Inside NASA's plan to maybe nuke an asteroid. This might sound crazy, especially based on what people have heard a lot of scientists say and what we've heard uh, about people, you know, just being, I don't know, a little bit reticent to use nuclear uh, weapons in outer space, but I still think the tests do need to be made. We, we think that it may not be a great idea to use a nuclear device out in outer space to deflect an asteroid. It might just, like people say, it might just blow it up into smaller chunks and they all hit the Earth at different times and do just about as much damage, if not more. But you never really know until you try, and especially if we can pick an asteroid to where it's so far off, far away, and the way the trajectory is, there's no chance it's going to ever harm Earth, or any little pieces that would possibly be left would just burn up in the atmosphere. But until you really say that something is not likely or not possible, it's something you probably should do. So uh, NASA says the asteroid known as Bino, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, B-E-N-N-U, Bino, has a 1 in 2,700 chance of striking Earth in September of, uh, what year, 2135. Uh, please don't print that an asteroid is going to crash to Earth, in quotes. A NASA aerospace engineer tells Washington Post, but it hasn't stopped NASA from putting together a contingency plan. Um, Hypervelocity Asteroid Mitigation Mission for Emergency Response is what it's called. Hammer. Where they were um, Details of the operation were revealed in a recent study by NASA and the National Nuclear Security Administration published in ACTA Astronautica. One possibility is sending a nine-ton spacecraft to smash into Bennu and redirect it out of Earth's orbit. A more likely possibility sees NASA detonating a nuclear device on Bennu, Armageddon style. However, there's no current plan for Hammer to become a reality. We're doing these design studies to prepare ourselves so that if we do find a threatening object, we're better prepared to deal with it, the aerospace engineer tells the Post. But Gizmodo reports there could be an easier way to deal with Bennu. Splash part of it with solar radiation absorbing paint. Yeah, that's another thing too, making one part of an asteroid very bright and one part of an asteroid uh, uh, really, uh, well, just contrasting colors basically. And by get, having an uneven reflection of sunlight, the thing will actually move out of its normal orbit itself. But um, I still think it's a, a viable plan. Uh, they Like they say in here, it's just right now in the planning stages, but uh, I would like to see it tested on an asteroid that does not at all have a chance of hitting us. So I think that's a pretty good idea. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.